Hey, this is Chris from Collision Hub and welcome back to Repair University. Now, I don't think there's a shop in the country that I go into that doesn't have at least two to three door skins in process every day of the week. And yet it's one of the most commonly misdone poor repairs that we see out there. Sean, let's talk a little bit about not necessarily the skinning process itself, but some of the after repairs, some of the little tips and tricks that a technician can do to get a much better job in the end. Right, well, first of all, we wanna make sure they're using the correct product that's made for that uh, cushion between the intrusion beam and the door skin. Okay, so if they choose the wrong product and it's a product that shrinks, has solvents in it, or dries hard, it could lock that skin in place and then when the door skin itself expands and contracts, you're gonna see little ripples down the side of the door. So you wanna use a, a soft or flexible product that does not shrink. And I'm here now to discuss some issues with applying foams to door skins. It's a common operation we see in the body shop every day, uh, but there's a lot of confusion about how to handle applying the foams once the, the skin is attached to the vehicle. So we're gonna talk about a couple of things. One thing we wanna make sure we do is to use the correct product or the correct foam. Now some technicians may just grab any seam sealer off the shelf and uh, you may have problems with that. Keep in mind that some of these products have solvents that allow the product to shrink down. So whatever product you're using, make sure it's 100% solids. Uh, there are correct products for this that are designed for this purpose and one would be a flexible foam such as this. So as the name says, it's flexible, it'll flex in and out as the door skin moves. Keep in mind that this metal door skin will expand and contract with heating and cooling cycles on a vehicle. Just like any other panel, you can heat shrink a vehicle or a, a panel with heat, uh, that panel's going to move in and out. So if we apply something solid to that panel, that does not allow that panel to move, we're gonna see some ripples down the door. So we wanna make sure we use either a soft foam or there's another material called an NVH or noise vibration harshness material. Now this material also is soft enough that'll allow the door to expand and contract and it will move with that part. This is also 100% solid so you won't get any shrinking that'll draw that panel in. So the first thing again is to use the correct products for the job. We don't wanna just grab any product off the shelf. The other thing we want to know is how to properly dispense these products. And I'm going to use this door here as an example. There's actually some spacing uh, between the door skin and the intrusion beam in a couple spots. There's some damaged foam that's broken away. And I'm just going to use this as an example of how to get the foam in that area without just having it run down the panel. So I'm going to first put on my safety equipment and grab my foam here. Now I'm going to use the flexible foam for this uh, application. Now one thing I see is a lot of guys will just uh, dispense this foam rapidly and not allow it to foam up. But what we really want to do is dispense it slowly until it starts to actually foam its way out of the nozzle. So if you dispense it too quickly, I'm just going to show this as an example, and you just quickly dispense. It'll just run down the panel. So what we want to do, we want to actually watch and we're going to see that foam up and it'll start to foam its way out of the nozzle. Being patient, now it's starting to foam. Now we can apply it and it's not going to just run right off the panel. So to apply it down in the door skin, that's all we would do. Slowly dispense the foam. All right, so now we see that a lot. Now I'll go into a shop and I look and there's maybe the C tech, someone who's just started or the kid that's just come out of the tech right. school and he's the door skin guy. And it seems like every door is laying on its back on, a, on an old part stand, you know, face up where I can see the inner workings of it. What's some of the problems that's gonna cause? Right, well, it's really important that 
what we do with this door skin after we apply our foam, okay? So once we have the correct products in there, it doesn't do any good if we then go and set the weight of the door down on the skin as it's being jammed in the paint shop or as it's being scun itself. So we have to, really, if it's up to me, I would wait until after the door is already finished and on the vehicle and then install the foam while it's in a vertical position. And then you're not gonna have that problem. Right, now after it goes, sometimes the technician can do all the right things and then the paint shop messes us up. We touched on it just a little bit, but for those folks that are out there that are maybe the, the paint prepper, the jammer, or whatever, what are some things that they need to know about doors? Well, again, they do not wanna lay this down until they're absolutely sure that this foam or product has been set up. And really, to be honest, they, they should put it on a stand where it's in the vertical position as they jam it. Because if they lay it down, you, there is a risk that you're gonna see ripples in the door. So are there any like standard operating procedures or anything that a shop could put in place to make sure that the technician's always choosing the right um, material and not just taking what's on the cart for them at that time? Well, a lot of shops do have approved material lists and that would be a good place to start. So I would select the correct material, a noise vibration harshness material for reattaching foam or filling very small gaps and then a flexible foam for operations such as this where you want to have that flexibility. Keep in mind, this same type of product would be used on roof skins, on van sides, all kinds of things where they have a, a supporting beam behind it. And we always wanna have that flexibility between those two panels or you may see some kind of ripples on the outside. All right, so if you've had that problem in the shop recently with any of your door skin jobs where you're getting that small wave in the metal and it seems like it's leaving the body tech going to the painter and having some problems, it could be the way that you're applying the door skins and the foam that you're using when you, when you complete that process. Take a time to visit the website, go to 3mcollision.com, look at the products and, and information that they have there, and then send us some questions if you have anything that you want to know about door skins, foam use, and getting the repairs done right.